I am Dr. Ingus Brahmoy, principal of this 144 years good old reputed institution, the Madurai Theravian Dai Manavar Hindu College, which is located at the southern part of uh, Tamil Nadu. On behalf of our college management, myself, teaching and teaching staff members, students, scholars, as a principal, I am very glad to inaugurate this international webinar program, jointly organized by Postgraduate and Research Department of Physics and Internal Quality Assurance Cell of our college, and welcome the gathering. The topic of this online program is international webinar on nanotechnology for electrochemical energy. The, term, the lecture will be delivered by Dr. K. Kartigayan, postdoctoral researcher, Department of Chemical Engineering from Congo University, Seoul, Republic of Korea. Karti, welcome to Dr. K. Kartigayan, sir. Thank welcome you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Four number of participants registered for this international webinar. Congratulations to the organizing committee. Arti, congratulations and welcome to Dr. K. Balasubramanian, IPC coordinator, and Dr. ASI Joint India Organizing Secretary. Both have taken much efforts to organize this international webinar for the welfare of the students. My, also, my sincere welcome and best wishes to all the staff members of PG and the Research Department of Physics and all the head and staff members of various departments for this program. Once again, my sincere welcome to all the staff, scholars and students of our college and other institutions and to give your valuable suggestion regarding this international webinar. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your warm welcome and inaugural address, sir. Now, let me introduce the resource person of this webinar. I'm very happy to introduce the resource person, Dr. K. Karthikeyan. He pursued his doctorate in PSG Institute of Advanced Studies at Coimbatore. He also had a experience of working as a research associate from 2009 to 19, and also as a research scientist for one year in PSG Institute of Advanced Studies, Coimbatore. He did his postdoctoral degree in in the University of Duisburg, Germany. Now he continues his postdoctorate research in Konkuk University, Seoul, South Korea. He has many publications in reputed journals and presented many papers in national and international conferences. He has top 10 articles in ACS census and elected as an editorial member in 2D materials in ACS Applied Nanomaterial Journal. He delivered many invited lectures his area of research includes electrochemical energy systems, carbon nanomaterials, and surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. We are very happy to have such a young dynamic researcher as a resource person for this webinar. On behalf of our college, I welcome you, sir. Now I hand over the session to Dr. K. Karthigayan for presentation. Sir, please. So thanks for the introduction, Mark. Thank you so much. Okay. Are you able to see the screen map? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, as uh, the introduction given by uh, Dr. Joyce Sindhya. So uh, I'm Dr. Karthi Ayan. So I'm work currently working as a postdoctoral researcher in uh, Department of Chemical Engineering, Cook University. So previously I had experience in the PSG Institute of Advanced Studies and as well as in uh, University of Duisburg, uh, Germany. So now today I would like to uh, give a talk on so the nanotechnology for electrochemical energy systems. So I'll be covering uh, as much as uh, possible. So uh, first initially, uh, I'll be, uh, this is my presentation outline. So first I will be giving a small introduction about the fuel cells. So then how it works and basic principles of uh, fuel cells and uh, what are the advantages and uh, challenges which is involved in uh, fuel cells. 
and uh, uh, so far we have carried out some of the research in uh, fuel cells so i'll be explaining in the following uh, slides and the application of fuel cells and uh, what are the challenges which is involved in the commercialization and finally uh, there will be a discussion uh, based on the presentation so let me just start the presentation from uh, in the basics so there is a uh, proton exchange membrane fuel cell it's a kind of uh, energy uh, production device so basically it converts chemical energy into electrical en energy in terms of uh, by using uh, hydrogen and the oxygen as a fuels so the hydrogen and oxygen will be supplied into the fuel cell so which will be directly converted into uh, electrical energy which can be uh, yes i can hear so uh, this electrical energy can be used for various purposes for portable electronics and um, uh, like uh, energy vehicles and so many things so we will be getting the byproduct as a water so the hydrogen and the oxygen will be reacting together in the fuel cells so that will convert it into uh, electrical energy and water will be produced as a byproduct so that's why it's called as a clean energy device so basically uh, the produced energy is basically the green energy so this is called uh, green energy devices so the this is this slide shows the basic operation of uh, fuel cell so this is polymer electrolyte membrane fuel cell. So the name itself says that uh, there is a polymer electrolyte which is sandwiched between uh, two catalyst layer. One is anode and another one is cathode. At the anode side, the hydrogen is uh, being supplied at the anode side and the oxygen is being supplied at the cathode side. So the hydrogen, uh, when, it, uh, is, when it is in contact with this catalyst layer, so the hydrogen splits into two protons and two electrons. So the proton will move across the membrane and the electron will be flowing through the external circuit. So the proton, as I said, the proton will be moving across the membrane and which will be reacting with this oxygen and electron, which will be directly converted into water. So the electricity can be used for various, various purposes. So there are uh, several advantages over other fuel cells. For example, if you look at solid oxide fuel cell, solid oxide fuel cell is a kind of uh, high temperature uh, uh, fuel cell. So, and also it can produce a lot of uh, carbon emissions. So that's why people are moving towards the polymer electrolyte uh, membrane fuel cell, or sometimes they will call it as proton exchange membrane fuel cells. So the proton uh, exchange membrane fuel cell, which exhibits uh, several advantages, so the first thing is, uh, it is uh, the hydrogen, the oxygen is the renewable and uh, this is a kind of renewable energy. The hydrogen is uh, very clean and the byproduct which is producing from the fuel cell uh, during the conversion of uh, chemical energy to electrical energy is a kind of clean uh, water and also you will get the electricity. So that's why we are calling it as clean energy device. And also the energy efficient, uh, the energy efficiency and the power efficiency of the fuel cell is much better than the fossil fuel conversion. And also when compared to other energy sources, so it gives high, high, high efficient uh, energy uh, conversion. And also, as I said, uh, this, uh, this is not producing kind of uh, carbon emission. So that's why we are calling it as zero emission. And uh, also the production of uh, electrical energy, which is which is in the faster rate because of the high power density, and uh, it it does not uh, produce any noise during the course of uh, the conversion, and also the this can be used for long term long term uh, usage is possible because as far as you supply hydrogen and oxygen uh, inside the fuel cell that will con convert uh, continuously the electrical energy. So uh, when you are, as far as you pass the hydrogen and oxygen inside the fuel cell, that produces the electrical energy. And also the another main advantage is, so this can, this is a kind of portable. So you can make it as a portable and you can keep it in any, keep it anywhere. So suppose if you are living in a kind of a mountain area or remote areas, so these fuel cell can be constructed over there and you can produce a lot of uh, power uh, from those sources so compared to the cost so suppose uh, this is called single fuel cell so when you construct these fuel cell into several series series of fuel cell 
it's called stack for example if you look at this image so for example if you look at this image this catalyst layer is uh, sandwiched uh, with this proton exchange membrane fuel proton exchange membrane so these two catalyst layer anode cathode and this membrane it's called mm -hmm. membrane electrode assembly so by developing several membrane electrode assembly with along with uh, several components so you can uh, create a stack so that you can get a lot of uh, uh, higher amount of energy from this uh, stack fuel cells so if you look at this fuel cell so the problem is uh, during uh, when you are uh, thinking about the commercialization so the half of the fuel cell cost it is mainly due to the membrane electrode assembly cost because so which involves the anode and cathode layer of catalyst so the catalyst is mainly uh, the platinum is the most widely used catalyst so the platinum is kind of a, one of the expensive electrocatalysts which is being used for the uh, fuel cell so in order to uh, reduce the fuel cell cost so people are working on a uh, different kind of uh, the development of uh, catalyst uh, either they are working on the uh, the quantity of usage so they are trying to reduce the quantity of usage of platinum or else they are making a uh, kind of uh, alloying of the catalyst so the platinum as i said the platinum is most widely used catalyst for the fuel cell by developing an alloy with certain other material so they are trying to reduce the cost of the uh, uh, membrane electrode assembly uh, mainly the catalyst layer as i said the 50 percent of the catalyst cost which is the fuel cell cost is mainly due to the uh, electrocatalyst cost so this is the uh, assembly of fuel cell so as i said uh, this is called membrane electrode assembly so there are three membrane electrode assembly here and this is the flow channel so and the oxygen is supplied here and the hydrogen is supplied here and the oxygen will come out from here and the hydrogen will come out from here so uh, this uh, hydrogen or oxygen when you are uh, supplying so this will be moving in the serpentine flow so this will be moving like this the gas will be flow like this and this will be in contact with this electro catalyst layer and the platinum will split those hydrogen in, into two protons and finally it will be reacting with uh, the oxygen and it converts water and the electricity as well so if you magnify this membrane electrode assembly you will see this so this is called membrane proton exchange membrane as i said and this is the gas diffusion layer when you are passing the gas using this flow channel so this will be diffused uh, inside to the catalyst layer and uh, <laughs> for example if you are passing hydrogen here so the hydrogen will be diffused and which will be going to this catalyst layer and here it is our catalyst uh in this image it is shown as the the catalyst is spherical shape but it need not to be a spherical shape it can be any shape like it can be spherical or rods or wires it can be anything so for example this platinum the yellow color thing is platinum which is supported on the carbon material so the carbon is a kind of support material for the catalyst it's a kind it will act as a host site for the catalyst so when the gas is passing through this uh, gas diffusion layer which will be in contact with this platinum and the platinum will split two protons and two electrons the proton will be moving through this membrane and the electron will be moving through an external circuit and which will be re the recombination will occur and it will produce the uh, water so in detail if you talk about this gas diffusion layer there are three components in the catalyst layer so gas diffusion layer and catalyst layer and the membrane so the gas diffusion layer is a, basically a carbon uh, membranes so it will be in the size of a micron size so carbon fiber will be fabricated uh, like a sheet and this will act as a gas diffusion layer which will be uh, the thickness will be around 0.2 to 0.5 millimeter and which will be used for the diffusion of gases and also whenever the uh, in the anode side it produces sorry cathode side produces water so where so this will be uh, treated with na, uh, teflon and it will be acting as a hydrophobic layer so that the water will be eliminated from this uh, gas diffusion layer there are 
two uh, main purposes. So there are various main purposes. Uh, mainly, the, it is used for the electrical and heat conduction. So the electrical conduction means, so whenever you are uh, supplying hydrogen and oxygen, it will produce electrical energy. So this will be conducting through this uh, gas diffusion layer. And also, during the course of uh, uh, electrochemical conversion, it will produce heat energy. It's a, it's a kind of a exothermic reaction. So it will produce heat energy. So this will be acting as a, a conductor for electrical and uh, heat energy. And also the catalyst support, uh, catalyst layer support material. So as I said, uh, there will be a hydrophobic layer over uh, this gas diffusion layer, which will avoid the flooding of the water. And also, as I said, uh, the gas will be distributed all over the catalyst layer. So this is the polymer electrolyte membrane, uh, which is used as a proton uh, conduction. So uh, this is a tetrafluorocarbon, uh, which act as a, basically, uh, this, this will be hydrated uh, because of the sulfonic acid group, which is present in the uh, membrane. So which... Uh, when the uh, hydrogen, when the proton comes from the catalyst layer, which will uh, contact with this and which will form the hydronium ion, then this is a kind of a proton hopping mechanism. The proton will interact with this water molecule which is present in the membrane, which will hop to the next water molecule. And then it will uh, directly uh, goes to the uh, anode layer. So this is the basic constitution of catalyst layer. So the catalyst layer is comprised of uh, platinum, which is supported on the carbon material. So the platinum is most expensively used catalyst. So in order to reduce the cat uh, catalyst, so people are working on the support material as well. I have also worked on the support material. I will be discussing about this later. So the platinum is the catalyst and the carbon uh, is the support material and the naphion will be used as an electrolyte. So in order to fabricate this catalyst layer, so there are various kinds of uh, fabrication methods are available, spraying and powder deposition, spraying using the gun uh, by in terms of uh, nitrogen gas and uh, sputtering technique also people are using it and electro spraying technique, technique and ultrasonic spraying uh, technique also people are nowadays using uh, and inkjet printing and uh, electro spinning. So the electro spinning is the most uh, convenient technique for uh, producing nanofibers. So that I will be discussing about uh, this electro spinning technique in detail in the following slides. So this is called electro spinning uh, technique. So uh, so there will be a syringe. So basically, uh, the polymer solution will be uh, converted into nanofibers. So the electro spinning technique is used to convert the nanofibers from polymer solution. So when you are using polymer solution, uh, by using syringe, you can uh, pressurize and it will be flowing through the needle. So this needle is connected with high voltage supply. And at the bottom, there is a ground plate. The plate is connect, the metal plate is connected with the ground terminal. So when you are applying high potential difference between this needle and the plate, so the polymer solution will be elongated and it will be stretched and it will be formed as a fiber. So this is the ohmic region and this is the convection region. So the polymer solution, so we will prepare it in the form of solution. And this will be feed through the nozzle by using a syringe. So under high potential difference, so the polymer solution will be directly converted into uh, nanofibers. So this will be deposited as a uh, different layers. Finally, you will get the nanofiber mat like this. So this nanofibers, this is a polymeric nanofiber. This is called polyacrylonitrile nanofibers. So in this video, you can easily see that. So there is a needle. So when uh, it is coming from the needle, the polymer solution, it is, there are so many branches which occurs because of the high potential difference. And finally, this nanofibers will be uh, directly deposited onto the uh, metal plate. So there are several various uh, variable parameters which can influence the nanofiber diameter. Mainly, uh, since we are using the solution, so there are three different things, the concentration of the solution and conductivity of the solution and the viscosity of the solution. By increasing or decreasing the concentration, so you can uh, change the diameter of the nanofibers. Similarly, 
So the molecular weight and the solvent volatility and the molecular structure, which can also influence the nanofiber diameter. So another thing is uh, the main parameter, which is uh, contributing in the fiber diameter uh, size reduction or increase. So it is mainly uh, from the electro spinning uh, variables. That is the distance between this needle and the plate and, and the voltage which you are applying. So this is basically 20 to 30 kilovolts of voltage which is applying during the course of electro spinning process. So when you are changing the distance between this tip and the target or by changing the voltage or by changing the flow rate of the solution or uh, these can influence the uh, fiber diameter. Similarly, uh, and also, uh, also the humidity and the temperature also can affect the fiber diameters. So our ultimate aim is to produce the nanofiber diameter. It should be very smaller. Then only uh, it has so many advantages. So as I said, the electro spinning uh, is one of the efficient technique for uh, producing nanofibers. So the nanofiber should be in, uh, it's, it's approximately in the size of uh, 100 to 200 nanometer, which is used for the catalyst layer for the fuel cells. And also, uh, as I said, so here we are using a flat type of collector, plate collector. So suppose if you use uh, instead of using this flat plate collector, you can use parallel plate collector and uh, the rotating drum. The drum will be rotating in a uh, certain RPM and so that the nanofiber will be deposited onto this. And also we have this type of collector and the conveyor type of collectors. So if you uh, deposit your material on the flat plate collector, the fiber will be, uh, it is it's uh, randomly deposited. And if you use these kind of collectors, rotating drum or flat uh, rotating disc collectors, so the fiber will be aligned in uh, in a axial fashion, and it will be a in uh, aligned nanofibers can be produced uh, uh, apart from this uh, randomly uh, oriented fibers. So, and also we have a different uh, type of uh, nanofiber structure can be produced. So, for example, if you look at this fiber, this is a kind of a cylindrical shape. So, apart from this, so you can also produce several uh, structures of nanofibers. Instead of using single needle, you can use multiple needle for the uh, higher production of nanofibers. So, and also you can use the coaxial type of uh, uh, setup for producing uh, hollow nanofibers, co-sheath nanofibers, and hollow porous nanofibers. So, I'll be discussing about this in detail. For example, if you use this single needle, so you are using a solid nanofiber. If you use this coaxial nanofiber, there will be a mixture of two nanofibers. So, inside this part, there will be a solution, one solution, and outer part, there will be another solution. So in the, this is called coaxial setup. So the inner solution and outer solution will combine here, and it will form the fiber like this, core, core sheet nanofiber. If you eliminate this core part, you will get the hollow nanofibers. So this porous nanofiber is, uh, you can create uh, by mixing with certain uh, uh, materials, and you can leach out that material uh, by using thermal or uh, solvent based technique. So you can create uh, porous nanofibers as well. So similarly, you can produce uh, coarse sheet porous and hollow porous nanofibers. So these nanofibers, basically, when you are uh, producing from electro spinning technique, so you are using a polymer as the source for producing nanofibers. So you will get the polymeric nanofibers in the final form. So, but our uh, for uh, the fuel cell purpose, instead of using this nano, uh, the particle, so we need to use the fiber form for uh, increasing the specific surface area and increasing the porosity. And there are so many advantages for increasing the conductivity. We need to produce the nano, uh, we need to produce the uh, carbon material in the form of nanofibers uh, uh, because it has several advantages over the particles. So we, are, we need to produce this nano, uh, nanofibers by using this electro spinning uh, uh, method. But uh, basically electro spinning method will produce only the polymeric nanofibers. But when you're treating with thermal treatment, so the thermal treatment will convert the polymeric nanofibers into carbon nanofibers. So uh, the morphological and structural characterization. So whatever the nanofiber you are producing uh, based on the electro spinning method, that has to be characterized using the structure uh, has to be characterized and the morphology has to be characterized, whether it is solid or whether it is, it has so many beads 
or whether it has uh, so many pore structures and what are the composition which is present in the material that has to be characterized using various uh, uh, instrumental techniques. So the mainly we are using transmission electron microscopy and scanning electron microscopy for analyzing the, and also atomic force microscopy for analyzing the surface morphology characterizations and XRD and Raman analysis uh, will be used for the structural characterizations and the BET analysis will be used for the porosity and surface area uh, analysis characterizations. So here, if you look at this transmission and scanning electron microscope, the electron source will be at the top and the electron will be flowing through the flowing from the top and it, which will be the sample will, will be placed at the bottom. So which will be flowing through the sample and the sample will interact with the electron and the electron will be transmitted through uh, the sample and the transmitted electrons will be uh, monitored using uh, the different kind of detectors. And finally, you will get the images. Similarly, the backscattered electrons uh, from the sample will be made, uh, assessed and it, you will get the images as well. And the atomic force microscopy, which has the cantilevers, which will be moving over the sample. And depending upon the sample surface, the cantilever will be deflected uh, upward and downward. So based on the movement of the cantilever, so you will get the images. So those images will be, these are all, these images will be used for the uh, characterization of the morphology of the sample. And the Raman analysis and the X-ray diffraction analysis will be used to understand the uh, solid state chemistry. And the BET analysis will be used for understanding the uh, specific surface area calculation and uh, also the pore size distribution in the sample. And uh, we are using the electrochemical characterization. So once we develop the material, so the material will be used for uh, the for the deposition of uh, electrocatalyst. So the electrocatalyst has to be characterized pre prior to the operation. So in order to uh, characterize with uh, this electrochemical characterization, we are typically using the cyclic voltammetry technique and rotating uh, disk electro uh, rotating disk. Uh, electrode for uh, understanding the linear swoop voltammetry and other uh, uh, electrochemical characterizations. So this uh, system consists of three different electrodes, the working electrode and reference electrode and counter electrode. And you'll also have the electrolyte inside. So these electrode will be immersed into the electro uh, electrolyte and the, your catalyst material which you are developing using platinum supported carbon nanofibers. So which will be directly deposited onto the uh, uh, working electrode and which will be acting as a working electrode and you will have the silver silver chloride uh, reference electrode and uh, counter electrode will be platinum. So there are uh, three different kind of uh, working electrode carbon gold and platinum. So mostly we will be using uh, carbon uh, rod based uh, working electrode and this is uh, there are se several kind of um, uh, reference electrode in which uh, we are using silver silver chloride as a reference electrode and platinum wire will be used or platinum mesh will be used as a reference uh, counter electrode. <coughs> so this is the material which we have developed using electro spinning technique. We have created porous structure, uh, porous carbon nanofibers. Basically we have used the polyacrylonitrile polymer solution uh, for producing the nanofibers using electrospinning technique. Then we have treated this nanofiber, uh, treated this nanofiber uh, using thermal annealing process, and we converted this polymeric nanofiber into porous carbon nanofibers. So we have mixed up uh, the sodium bicarbonate nanoparticle. When we are treating to the higher temperature, the sodium bicarbonate nanoparticle will come out, come out of from this nanofiber and which will create the porous, tiny pores inside the nanofibers. So this has been characterized using various techniques, as I said. So this is the transmission electron microscopy image of uh, porous carbon nanofiber. And this is the magnified image where you can see the tiny pores, which is present inside the carbon nanofibers. And these two pictures are showing the deposition of platinum nanoparticle. Because this carbon nanofiber acts as a support material for catalyst, and the platinum acts as a, a catalyst material, the platinum is coated onto the carbon nanofibers and which act as a uh, catalyst layer for uh, the development of fuel cell. So this is the membrane electrode assembly uh, set, uh, setup image 
So this is the catalyst layer and this is the membrane. So this total setup is called a membrane electrode assembly. And finally, we are using this membrane electrode assembly uh, for this single cell constructed construction. So we have constructed this single cell uh, using several components. And this single cell has been tested with uh, fuel cell testation. And uh, if you look at this image, <clears throat> this is obtained from the electrochemical characterization. So we have identified the maximum <clears throat> uh, limiting current density uh, from this fuel cell. And also the single cell, <clears throat> uh, single cell shows the maximum uh, uh, power density and the maximum current density for our material. Uh, similarly, we have also fabricated the mesoporous hollow carbon anafiber using coaxial electrospinning setup, as I explained earlier. So inside the uh, inside there is there will be two uh, things. So outer outer part and the inner part. So inner part uh, will be uh, supplied with uh, polymethyl methacrylate solution, which will be removed finally. And uh, outer part will be filled with uh, polyacrylonitrile solution, which is mixed with uh, sodium bicarbonate uh, nanoparticles. So when you are uh, using uh, electrospinning technique for producing nanofiber, we will be supplying high potential difference. So during that time, the polymer solution will be deposited as a nanofibers. So these nanofibers will be uh, treated with uh, thermal annealing process. So finally, uh, you will get the porous carbon nanofiber. Then we will do the functionalization process for the deposition of the electrocatalyst. And finally, the platinum will be uh, decorated on the uh, mesoporous carbon nanofibers, mesoporous hollow carbon nanofibers. So similarly, we have characterized using several techniques. So this is the transmission electron microscopy image where you can see the hollow structure inside the four nanofibers. And the platinum nanoparticles also deposited onto the uh, mesoporous hollow carbon nanofibers. So this is the uh, field emission scanning electron microscope where you can see the hollow structure of the nanofibers. So finally, we have used cyclic voltammetry technique and uh, uh, linear sweep voltammetry analysis for understanding the uh, understanding the performance of the material. So we have identified that this is giving maximum performance when compared to the commercial benchmark uh, electrocatalyst. Uh, we have also fabricated the same thing with uh, graphene foam. So initially, the graphene is derived from graphene oxide, and the graphene oxide is basically derived from graphite. So the graphite is uh, converted into graphene oxide using Hummer's method, and it further converts into uh, graphene uh, by chemical reduction method. So these graphene is uh, deposited onto the polyurethane uh, commercial foam, and it is heat treated, and finally it converts into graphene foam, which which was used for the uh, uh, purpose for uh, purpose of uh, catalyst uh, layer development. And this has an, uh, this has also been tested with uh, several characterizations, and we have identified the improvement in the efficiency. But uh, compared to this uh, graphene foam, we have uh, uh, identified that uh, identified that the mesoporous carbon nanofibers were showing a higher performance. So there are uh, so many research uh, on the fuel cell uh, across India. So if you look at, there are uh, so many institutes in India, IIT, IAM, sorry, IIT, Bell, and MNRI, and uh, SICRI. There are so many institutes so uh, where uh, the fuel cell research is uh, actively going on. And I have uh, performed, uh, the I have, uh, involved in uh, various research in uh, PhD Institute of Ad Advanced Studies for the past uh, 12 years. So if you look at the commercialization, so the fuel cell is uh, already commercialized in several countries. So the big uh, fuel cell stacks are developed uh, from the ballard systems. So as I said, uh, the single fuel cell, which will be connected in series, and they will be developing as a fuel cell stack for the higher production of energy. So these fuel cell stacks will be uh, kept inside the vehicle and which will be uh, run based on using uh, hydrogen as the fuel. There are so many commercialization, uh, commercial vehicles which is available uh, across the world. So the Toyota, they have developed one car uh, based on the fuel cell, hydrogen fuel cell. In Germany, uh, the first fuel cell train uh, takes up a regular service which is operated in Germany. And also the US, uh, a Ballard system based uh, fuel cell uh, vehicles are running in US. 
and also uh, not only in these countries there are uh, several countries which they are actively participating in the development of fuel cell so in india so recently in uh, pune they have uh, developed a, a stack fuel cell and they have built uh, those stack fuel cell uh, which has been used for uh, operating one bus so uh, in pune they have uh, recently there is uh, the the economic times uh, reported that so uh, in india also they are concentrating on the development of fuel cell uh, compared to other uh, sources and also so stationary things so in uh, dusan fuel cell so they are developing a ship uh, based on the fuel cell uh, for the higher power generation in south korea similarly they are also the, uh, the hyundai uh, mobis the hyundai motors so they are investing uh, 1.1 billion dollar for uh, developing uh these fuel cells uh, by incubating this uh, two new hydrogen fuel cell system plants in south korea so the higher south korea also they are actively participating in the development of fuel cell apart from that uh, they are also uh, developing fuel cells for uh, home uh, uh, home electricity so in usa and as well as uh, fuel cell powered home in tokyo japan and also this fuel cell can be used as a portable device for portable devices for like uh, power banks and uh, mobiles and laptops so this can these fuel cell can also be used for the portable electronics but there are uh, several challenges also in, involved in this commercialization uh, because there is a hindrance in the commercialization it is mainly due to the hydrogen production so because uh, the hydrogen production also cost uh, production also based on the platinum so they are trying trying to reduce the platinum uh, in terms of uh, in terms of using other materials molybdenum carbide molybdenum sulfide and mexin based material uh, to replace the platinum and the hydrogen storage is the challenging uh, task which is involved in the commercialization of fuel cells because it is one of the highly flammable uh, medium so so this cannot be uh, basically the hydrogen is stored at the under high pressure so the this can lead to a uh, bigger problem uh, when it comes to the commercialization and another thing is uh, during the conversion of uh, uh, electrical energy from chemical energy so the water and thermal uh, uh, water will be produced and also the heat will be liberated in the fuel cell so people are also working on uh, uh, by compensating this uh, water and thermal management uh, Uh, by designing various uh, construction of fuel cells and it has uh, the investment should be more because uh, it has lot of components which is involving in the fuel cell development so the investment also it's more so they are try, trying to reduce the investment and the infrastructure as i said uh, south korea they are uh, investing 1.1 billion dollar money for uh, development uh, for developing these kind of uh, commercial vehicles so they need uh, bigger infrastructures <clears throat> and they should have more investment for uh, producing this uh, type of fuel cells and the cost of the raw materials as i said the platinum it costs more so uh, altogether so <clears throat> if you look at these challenges people are uh, trying to resolve these problems for the commercialization of the fuel cell once it commercializes so you can get a lot of energy as compared to fossil fuels so that you can uh, reduce the carbon emission and you can get the clean energy uh, in terms of uh, fuel cells so these are all the advantages of the fuel cell and challenges which is involving in the fuel cells so thank you so much for uh, attending this so uh, thank you so much for the, your patience if you have any uh, questions please feel free to ask thank you sir you have given a clear picture about the principal assembly of proton exchange membrane fuel cell for the production of electrical energy and more about the meso pro carbon nano fibers thank you sir uh, there's a there's one question in the chat box sir okay please to produce nano fibers in what state we have to keep the samples liquid or semi solid uh actually <clears throat> the polymer material will be in the form of solid okay so you have to uh, dissolve it uh, with certain solvent to make it as a liquid so the liquid will be flown through the syringe and which will be uh, uh, converted into nanofibers so finally you will get the nanofiber structure in the form of solid 
but initially you will be using as a liquid. Yes. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, yeah, yes. Any other questions from participants side? Yes, sir. No more questions, I think. We shall conclude, okay, okay. sir. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your... First of all, I would like to thank the management team of our college for their continuous support and continuous encouragement. Next, I thank Dr. A. Subramanian, principal, for the academic support and technical arrangement of the webinar. I convey my sincere thanks to Dr. K. Bala Subramanian, Anvina, head of the department, physics and IKSC coordinator. My special thanks to the faculty members of physics for their backing support. I also extend my thanks to Mr. Subhas Chandra Bose, Assistant Professor of Physics for technical arrangement. My special thanks to the faculty members of physics for their backing support. On behalf of Madurai Dravyam Taimanavar Hindu College, I thank the resource person, Dr. K. Karthikeyan, for his immediate acceptance for this webinar owing to his busy schedule and for his wonderful presentation and clarification for the questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Feedback form which needs to be completed by you is posted in the chat box and the link will be active up to 6 p.m. today. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.